so um, I am done with section three point seven. Uh, so turns out I don't know what happened to me, but I had a brain fart. Um, when I finished, I didn't finish three point six. I forgot there was one more topic to cover. Uh, I guess I was so excited, but we knew every derivative. Um, that I forgot. I forgot I was supposed to talk about. I I thought I already had, and I hadn't. So, um, there's a thing called logarithmic differentiation. Which honestly, I was never taught. I, I learned it um, the first time I, I learned it was a thing the first time I taught this class. Uh, but anyway, this is, um, this is um, a thing where you take all the things, the things we know and you put them in a blender. Um, And the moral of the story of logarithmic differentiation is this, if the logarithm if the log of a function simplifies, then We were on 3.7, uh, and we and we're done with 3.7 now. And now we're back to the part of 3.6 that I accidentally skipped. Uh, so they're pretty much independent. So what you do if you if you think the logarithm is easier because for example it has powers or products or quotients the kind of things that simplify when you put a logarithm in front of them so not sums because um, the logarithm of a sum there's nothing to do with that um, So you take logarithms and you use implicit differentiation. So this is called logarithmic differentiation. I don't know if anyone calls this calls it this outside of uh, Stewart. And honestly, it doesn't solve anything that we don't already know how to solve, uh, but um, it can make it easier. So why would the logarithm of something simplify? Um, because um, logarithms make, uh, make products into sums and sums are easier to take derivatives off than than products, uh, they make quotients into subtractions and they make powers into products. So, um, all right, so that's the theory of it. Let me just do an example. <clears throat> uh, the derivative. of a complicated looking function okay so um this is a derivative we know how to do um 
by using the quotient rule and then using a bunch of chain rules and using the product rule for the derivative of the of the numerator. Uh, and the thing is, this function you you really want to simplify a function with the, before taking the derivative because it will make your life easier. But um, this is there's nothing to simplify here. I could expand that x squared plus one to the fifth, but I don't I don't know if that's better. So um, so I could do this and take a whole hour, or I could uh, I I can write I can call this function y. And then make this into an implicit differentiation problem. So nobody gave me an implicit differentiation problem, but I invented one by uh, taking logarithms. So um, what I do is I take the logarithm on both sides and then. Then the the function is gonna the logarithm of this function is gonna become much easier to deal with. Uh, <clears throat> because there's a product there, there's a bunch of powers with all sorts of exponents. So, um, of course, if we take the derivative right now, we won't get anything. We don't, won't get anything out of it. What I want to do is uh, use the fact that the logarithm of a product is the logarithm of the sum of the logarithms and the logarithm of a quotient is the difference of the logarithms. So I guess this is a quotient. This is the logarithm of x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 to the fifth minus the logarithm of the denominator. Um, and now I have, so that first term is the logarithm of a product. So that's a sum of logarithms. And now all of these are logarithms of powers. So I can make my life even better by remembering that the logarithm of a, of a power is the um, is the product of the exponent times the logarithm. So uh, this is a one half power. This is a fifth power. And this is a one third power. And all of a sudden, that doesn't look so bad to take the derivative off. Um, so now I have logarithms of sums, and logarithms of sums, they're just logarithms of sums. There's nothing to do with them. Logarithm of x plus 1, it's just not, nothing, nothing, no simpler way to write that. So in the end, by taking logarithms on both sides and simplifying uh, my my function is looking like this. So I feel a lot more encouraged to take the derivative all of a sudden because there's no there's no quotient rule anymore to do. There's no uh, there's no products. There's only derivatives of logarithms and chain rules. And I can deal with that. So 
Um, so now, now I, I'm going to take the derivative on both sides. So the derivative of the logarithm of y respect to x. So now I have to use implicit differentiation. Um, can't really, this is not one over y. This is the derivative respect to y times the derivative of y respect to x. That's what the chain rule says. Say it again. As I have a question. Yeah. Why did you change it back to ln? Change it back? I didn't. Yeah, because wasn't it log? Oh, that was always ln? Oh, wait, no, the, the next. Oh, uh, so I, when I'm not teaching calculus, I call the logarithm log. Uh, you know, for me, for me, log means a log base e. So I do yeah. sleep sometimes and I write log instead of ln. Oh, okay. Um, but I think I, I'm not. I don't think I did here. They're all LNs. I think I was hearing you say log, but you probably oh. wrote LN. Oh yeah, I, I do call them logs. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the chain rule on the left side gives me a uh, derivative of the logarithm of y respect to y. And that's just, that's just something I know by heart. It's one over y. And then the derivative uh, of y respect to x, this is the, the unknown. This is what I want. This is what I'm trying to solve for. Now, uh, so this is the, the left hand side. Now, the right hand side, uh, I'm supposed to there's no y's, so it's just in good old fashioned derivative of a function of x. And all I gotta all I gotta do is use the chain rule a little bit. So um, the derivative of the logarithm of x plus one. Derivative of the logarithm of x plus one, uh, well that's the composition, that's x plus one, and then the logarithm. Uh, so I'm supposed to take the derivative of the outside applied to the inside. And then I'm supposed to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is, which is one by the power rule. You forgot the one half in front of natural log or x. Oh yeah. Thank you so much, Sydney. I would have totally just kept going and never noticed that again. Thank you. So the one half, it's a constant that's multiplying the derivative. So um, the, I can just leave it there and you must ignore it. Remember, constants that are multiplying stay there when you take a derivative. Constants that are adding become zero. And and these are all pretty similar. So the constant stays there. And then I take the derivative of the outside, which is derivative of logarithm, which is just uh, one over whatever is inside of the logarithm times the derivative of the inside. Uh, which the power rule tells me is 2x. Derivative of the outside, derivative of the inside. And finally, negative one third, I'm just going to keep there. And derivative of logarithm applied to the inside is one over whatever is in there. And the derivative of the inside is the derivative of x minus three, which is one. Um, so that's it, it's some formula, it's long, but I don't care. Uh, so what I have is that y prime divided by y 
is this expression. So now pretty easy to solve for y prime. You you just take y y prime equals y times uh, this whole thing, just copy it plus phi one over x squared plus one negative one third times one over x minus three. Uh, and maybe I should remember what y is. Y was the square root of x plus one, x squared plus one to the fifth cubic root of x minus three, and just copy that down. And then, oh, I really wish I could copy and paste. I can't uh, and delete, but I can't copy. Well, there you go. <clears throat> and that's it. So, I mean, this was a complicated derivative, uh, but I feel like doing it like this and not using the quotient rule. Um, it was, it was, it really was easier. Um, so are there more questions? Um, uh, could you just leave it like that or do you have to like multiply and stuff? Oh, no, 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 no way I'm multiplying this. Um, okay. So maybe you can just like simplify what's in the parentheses and then leave it like that. Uh, by simplifying, do you mean more than it's already? Oh well, yeah, it's already. I mean, I could. There's things I could. I could combine this, this five and this two x, but there's just no reason for me to want to write a common denominator or things like that to add yeah. these fractions. Nothing. Nothing to gain there. Maybe if I wanted to do something with this function afterwards, I would. But... <clears throat> If I had done the quotient rule, which I guess if you really were, you can try out, the answer would look a lot different. Uh, because, well, it would be simplified a different way, uh, but it would be the same, of course. Any other questions? All right, so this was pretty long. Um, complicated. Now I'm going to do some other examples um, that are not as long as complicated. Um, but my point there was that it was doable. Um, so um, one thing I promised in the video I recorded Saturday is that we can prove the, the power rule, which is something that I stated and there are proof. So if you look at the book, there was a proof where the exponent is a whole number, but of course, but the proof that that proof doesn't work if the exponent is one half or something like that, um, or pi. But um, using just the derivative of logarithm and the chain rule, both of which we have proof, um, I can prove the power rule. So if I have y equals x to the n, I'm going to use logarithmic differentiation. So logarithmic. Ugh, so many letters. Way too many letters. Logarithmic differentiation. So that means take logarithms on both sides. And 
uh, simplify and then take the derivative. So uh, I took the logarithms. Now I'm going to simplify, and the the rules of logarithms say that this is the logarithm of x n times. Um, and, and the logarithm of a power is a is a product. So uh, next step is take derivatives. And well, if you do implicit differentiate uh, logarithmic differentiation, the the side with the y always looks identical. Um, it's always y prime divided by y. You don't really need to think about it. So um, this is again same chain rule as before: derivative of log y respect to y times dy dx. Um, and on the right, I have the derivative of the logarithm, so that's just 1 over x. And the n, the n is a constant that's multiplying, so uh, it doesn't care what's happening. Now, the derivative of the logarithm of y is 1 over y, and y prime is the thing I'm trying to solve for. So um, in conclusion, solving for y prime amounts to multiplying by y. That's also always the same when you do implicit differentiation. And that's the formula for the derivative. If I now remember that y is x to the n, then I have that y prime is x to the n times n divided by x, which of course, when you uh, take a quotient of powers with the same base, the the exponents subtract, and that's the power rule. Great for us. Any questions? No. All right. <clears throat> I guess you do speak for everyone because nobody had any questions. So thanks, Brendan. Um Okay, um, what's the next thing I wanted to do? Okay, so another derivative, which is um, not clear how to do. Wait, actually, I do have a question. Oh, all right. Um, did you take the derivative of x to the n at the very end? No, I, I found the derivative of x to the n at the very end. Um, I was I was trying to prove it, so I was pretending like I didn't know the answer. Uh, so I just I write that this formula, and then if you remember what y is from the beginning, y is x to the n. So what you get is um, just just this. So you you replace y by x to the n, and then you simplify this. So I plugged in x to the n for y, and and I just got n x to the n minus one. How did you get x to the n minus one? Well, because I have, so I have x to the n divided by x to the one. That's just what was already there, and when you divide when you divide two powers with the same base the exponents uh, subtract. If I take 
2 to the 3 divided by 2 to the 2. Then two of the twos in the numerator cancel with two in the twos of the denominator, and I get two. But where is x to the n over x to the one? I'm confused. Where? Oh, uh, here. So here is x to the one, mm -hmm. and here is x to the n. Why is x to the n? Okay, so did you just multiply x to the n times n? Mm -hmm. like... uh, x to the n, it's been there all the time. The, the n has been there all the time. Didn't do anything special with it. So you just took n from on top of x to the 1 and put it to the side and replaced it with x to the n? I okay. took y, replaced it with x to the n, and left the n on the side, yes. How can you do that? Which which parts? Replacing y by x to the n? No, by replacing n with x to the n. No, I didn't replace n with x to the n. I had so I had n. I know you you're right that I can't do that. There's n here, then there's n here, then there's n here. I didn't replace n by anything. Okay. You don't sound convinced, and I would like you to be convinced because you're the you're the the hero who's asking. But if you're asking, that means half the people here are confused. Maybe I'm just confusing everyone else on here. We don't know, but I just I would bet that you're not. Like I understand where you replaced y with x to the n. Because well, that that was that's where I started. Um, okay. I get I, that part. So why did I mean anything else but x to the n the whole time? Um, let's try to start over. Um, so I started saying, why is x to the n? And then I took some logarithms and derivatives. And I got to the point where I knew that y prime was uh, y times n divided by x. So that's where I was. Then I know y is x to the n. So, uh, I can plug this in and I have y prime equals x to the n and then everything that's not y, I am, I'm just leaving as it is. And now I can simplify this. I can, well, um, it's a fraction, it doesn't matter how I write it. And then this is the same as saying, x times x to the n minus 1. So this is the same as n minus 1 x's and then one more. But if I write it like this, then 1 cancels with 1 in the bottom. And I get x to the n minus n times n, which is uh, multiplication is commutative is the same as n times x to the n minus 1. So you just, hold on. I think I'm like slowly understanding it. I haven't figured out yet what the, where of all these steps, um, the problem is. So you 
Are you? Oh my god. I think I get it. Hold on. Let me. Don't move the screen so I can write this down, please. All right. So, people who are not Sydney or Matthew, are you? Are you getting it now? Are you? Um, waiting for Sydney to say your butts? Are you? Have you given up? And are you? Uh, looking at your Facebook or not? It's you don't have Facebook. You're too young. You're looking at TikTok on your watches. I guess I'll never know. Okay, okay. I haven't really put much thought into it. I just write it down and then think about it later. All right. Uh, well, doing that has the problem that you don't get to ask me questions as you're thinking about it. Okay. Um, all right. So. So here's a derivative um, that is um, looks very complicated at first because this is so you you should look at this and think that this should be the chain rule, but you can't really name two functions. I mean, you can, but it's it's complicated to name two fu two functions that this is the composition of um because well if anyone disagrees with me uh then tell me the functions this is a composition of So, or no one disagrees with me. Um, I could, the thing is, I could write this as e to the x log x and take the derivative um, just by the properties of exponents. But easier than that, or really easier than that, is to use logarithmic differentiation. So you write y equals to your function. Y equals f of x. Step two, uh, take logarithms and simplify. So this looks like a place where I want to take logarithms because powers of the logarithm of a power is going to look better. Uh, the logarithm of a power is going to be the exponent times the logarithm of the base. Um, then you take implicit uh, derivatives. So on the left, you have the derivative of log y, which is a derivative I've done twice today already. And on the right, I guess I have the I have a product. So this is um, derivative of log y respect to y times t y dx. This is one over y times y prime. So this is y prime over y. On the right hand side, I have a product. So I should use the product rule. Um, so the product rule is says take the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And these are some great derivatives to take because they're so easy. Derivative of x is just one. 
the derivative of well then there's an x and then the derivative of the logarithm is just one over x so this is um log x plus one so um now we have the der derivative um then we multiply by y to solve for uh, y prime. And the last thing we're gonna do is plug y equals the function back in. Um, so, I'm about to change pages, so copy whatever you want to copy real fast. Um, okay. What if you get uh, log of x plus x times 1 over x? Why? Was like lx plus 1. So, um, why the 1 over x? Well, no, like why, like how did you get like log of x plus 1? From here? From here to here? Yeah, instead of just like 1 over x times x. Well, x divided by itself is 1. You take anything divided by itself, you get 1. Like this cancel. How does that get uh, log x plus 1? Well, I have, so log x times 1, so anything times 1 is itself. And then anything divided by itself is 1. And then when you add them together, you get log of x plus one. All right, well, did, you, did you use like the multiply like rule for derivatives with like x times? Uh... Well, to get, um, I mean, to get here, I use the, the product rule. Okay. Uh, so, the product rule says take the derivative of one times the other, and then the derivative of the other times one. And then I just uh, solve these derivatives. The derivative of x respect to x is one. The derivative of the logarithm is one over x. Then log x times one is just itself. Anything times one is itself. And here I have uh, x multiplying and dividing, so they cancel but they cancel multiplying, so I get a one. And that leaves me with one logarithm and one one. Uh, sure, Matthew, I can do the other way as well. Uh, and see if we get the same answer. But let me finish this way first. So here's where I am. Um, y prime over y is log of x plus one. So I said what I just wrote was step five, solve for y for y prime, sorry. So just multiply, multiply with some brackets because otherwise um, it's gonna be wrong. And then uh, plug in the function for y. So y was a letter I invented right now to, to represent x to the x. But there was no y, there were no y's in the question. The question was take the derivative of x to the x. Um, so the derivative is x to the x times the logarithm of x plus one. And that's it, that's the derivative. Any more questions before I I do it the other way? So um, not doing implicit differentiation is pretty similar. Um, so um, the way to use the chain rule here is to 
um, just to remember that any power, this is pretty useful, like it's come a bunch of times already. Any power is, um, can be written as an exponential, like of base E like this, um, basically because uh, I can write any positive number, which this function, if this function makes sense, X has to be positive. I can write any number as the exponential of its logarithm because these are inverse functions, uh, which means that doing one than the other uh, doesn't uh, doesn't change. I guess we got where I started. So x is the exponential of its logarithm. So x to the x is the exponential of the logarithm uh, to the power of x. And if you take a power of a power, that's multiplying the exponents. So this is e to the x log x. So now I can use the chain rule. x to the x is the composition of first do x log of x, and then plug that into the, uh, into the um, exponential. So um, the derivative of x to the x is the derivative of e to the x log x. And here I can use the chain rule. So the derivative of the outside, the outside function, um, so the outside function is e to the u, and the inside function, what I'm plugging in for u, is x log x. So the derivative of the outside is just uh, itself. The derivative of the exponential is itself. And now the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is the derivative of x log x. And um, what I'm going to do is not do that again. So. Um, the derivative of x log x is the logarithm of x plus one. Um, I just did this in the previous page. So here, if I hadn't just done it, I would just do the, the product rule again, I would get the same answer. But I'm not gonna, so uh, I'm not gonna go repeat that. It's identical. So here I had the derivative of x log x and I did it. I got log of x plus one. So um, if camera would let me copy and paste, I would copy and paste, but it's this program is kind of half fast. And and that's it, that's the answer. So the derivative I wanted was e to the x log x times log of x plus one. So did I get the same answer? as I did before. So using logarithmic differentiation, I got one formula using uh, just the chain rule. I got another formula. Hmm. But it's the same. Yeah, exactly, Matthew. Uh, I just said x to the x is the exactly the same as e to the x log x. So, um, so yeah, these are exactly the same. Um, So in case you haven't noticed yet, there's a, almost all the derivatives. There's a lot of ways, a lot of different ways to do them. And you always get the same answer because there's only one derivative. Um, 
right? So, um, last thing I'll do today is, um, is tell you something about the number E that you might, you might have known, you might haven't. Uh, you might not know. Um, but the number E, so um, the thing, the thing you might have heard about the number E is that it's the limit of this thing of this number that approaches one to a power that approaches infinity. Um, it's, um, it's the solution to the problem. What if you, what if the bank gives you a hundred percent interest that compounds infinitely often? Um, would you, would you have heard of that somewhere? I don't know. Um, but I can show, I can show you that this is true using the derivative of logarithm. So what I want to do is um, I have the logarithm and I want to write f prime of one. So f prime of one is, uh, well, the derivative is, I know is one over x. And if you make x equals one, the derivative is just one. Uh, but also the derivative by the definition of the derivative, which I haven't written in a while, because we know so many things, we don't need it so much anymore, is, is the limit of a change in f divided by the change in h. And f is the logarithm. So this is the, the limit of the logarithm of one plus h minus the logarithm of one divided by h. Uh, I know the logarithm of one is zero. Because this is the power that I need to raise e to, to get one. So that means that I know that this limit of logarithm of one plus h divided by h is is one, and I could write this um, well using well this is one this is one over h uh, times that logarithm just because how fractions work. Um, and using the, the loss of logarithms, a product is the same as the power inside the logarithm. This is the logarithm of one plus h to the one over h. So in conclusion, one is the limit of this function. And how is that related to the number e? Well, if I if I take exponentials which are continuous, I get e to the one. So since the exponential is continuous, I can get it past the limit. So this is e to the logarithm of one plus h to the one over h. Um, and the exponential of a logarithm is just itself. And this is the limit of one plus h to the one over h. And this is what I, this is what I wanted. Um, now, if I know that E is the limit, say X, X approaches zero of 
the letter doesn't matter of one over x. Um, I can make n equals one over x. So x will be one over n. And this is going to be the limit as n does something of one plus one over n to the n. Um, and well, if x goes to zero, n is going to go to infinity. And that's it. And that's why um, that's a way to describe the number e that you might have seen. Because for me, the number e is the base that makes the derivative of the exponential itself, um, like I said a couple of weeks ago. But often you see this as the number e, and now you know why they're, why they're the same. OK. Um, Anyway, I'm not going to ask you to, you know, this is just so you know, I'm not going to ask you to prove this because that would just mean I'm asking you to copy something from the book, which would be boring. I'm not going to ask you to prove a similar thing because I don't, I don't know. Not the most useful skill. All right. Um, and that's it. Uh, so you can ask me questions.